Hi and welcome. Command Modern Operations is a game I wanted to get into since it was still called Command Modern Air Naval Operations. I finally bought Command Ammo about a year ago, but I entered the silly routine of playing the tutorials and then leaving it for months, forgetting almost everything, getting back to it just to start again for the tutorials. Only recently I managed to move a little deeper and after reviewing the basic air to air tutorial I jumped into a quick battle to see how the air to air simulation works. To everyone's surprise, I study with a flight of Tomcats. I launched the first mission and spent the next 20 minutes setting up ROE and engagement range and test a sort of mini timeline at least in the sense of employment range and plan. So, first things first, I noticed the tiny radar coverage. No big deal, it is probably defaulting to TACWA scan or TWS or simply twist. Therefore, let's find how to switch to pulse doppler search, pulse search, or rage while search. You know, the mods aim at searching and building situational awareness. Without those, we are stuck with one of the most powerful radars ever mounted on an aircraft and a field of view of a banana. We will get back to this later. The second problem I run into is the lack of azimuth control. Radars are stuck on zero degrees azimuth, therefore the fighter's heading is always the bisector of the radar volume. This is quite annoying as cranking and offsets are fundamental tools. Moreover, adjusting the radar azimuth is fundamental when intercepting a target. As we have discussed so many times on flying wire, poor pursue is usually a back call, but the current radar stuckness means that I can't do a cut into greater than collision without losing radar awareness, and the maximum offset would be something enough to place the target plus minus 20ATA. At this point I was a bit baffled, I was sure I was missing something, so I jumped on Google and looked for a proper answer. Why the OG-9 radar of the F-14 Tomcat limited to 40 degrees search arc? Although the OG-9 has plus minus 65 degrees from the scan sector, the aircraft doesn't search arcs larger than 40 degrees to bars or 20 degrees for bars at a time. This is so that tracks can be updated every 2 seconds. A full 130 degrees 8 bar sweep may take as much as 30 seconds and has limited tactical use. As such, it has a 40 degrees frontal arc in command. It is true that TWIS has severe limitations and that's why it was not used as it is employed in DCS or command mode operations, but there are more issues and more on this later. Looking beyond command version 104, the plan is to allow AI and player to turn the search arc or scan cone sideways, so the aircraft can scan 65-25 degrees of angle. The aircraft can then launch medium range missiles, turn 60-ish degrees to reduce the closure rate and still guide missiles to the target. Getting this to work properly for all aircraft weapon and tactical combinations is a bit of a pain, so it will take time to implement and test. However, the database has already been updated to support this, so the groundwork has already been done. The developer won't give any promise on ATA though. The last part is great and I really appreciate when devs clarify this sort of situation. It is a clear indication that some mechanics will be improved, and addressing them is just a matter of time and resources. This has a sort of a similar problems, maybe all tech uh, or design, uh, probably tech that as a new game probably would take these aspects into account in the design phase. Then the team are not as big as you know Microsoft and so on. But again, communication is key and I can stress how much I appreciate the size of this FAQ. I want to go deeper into some of the issues anyway, because they are interesting topics. In my opinion, starting from our beloved F14, the usage of TACWA scan, a note about tactics and a final suggestion on radars. The fact that the F14 is stuck in TACWA scan means that not only the expert's volumes is tiny overall, it also lacks verticality. This is a problem, especially if the aircraft AI do not use techniques to monitor the airspace, you know, the good old radar mating, if you're not new to this channel. Long story short, if you stack the radars minimizing the overlap, you can cover the same azimuth by a lot of vertical airspace. This is very useful in case of terrain masking, uh, leakers trying to sneak through and so on. Next, I'm not sure whether 30 seconds to scan the area comes from. The total time is about half of the number, so circa 30-40 seconds. Also, checking the details in game, the OG-9 is described as late 70s technology, which is quite incorrect. The OG-9 has been operative since 1962, according to US Navy, and considered that the first testing using the OG-9, which was going to be then used on the F-111B, date to 1964 65. One of the first launches of the M-54 Phoenix dates back to 1966, using an ad hoc modified A3A featuring the F-111B Radom. This is a picture of the test conducted in September 1966, uh, so sees US Navy via Wikipedia. The peculiar angle is due to the fact that the Phoenix was forcibly ejected from the rail, 
As you can see, this is RD technology from almost the 80s, but the digital revolution was already well established. By the way, this is a crucial point I raise every time F15 and F14 are compared because they simply cannot be compared. The idea makes little sense. Another problem I see is the usage of trackway scan. Everyone knows that our beloved piece of junk called Log9 achieved the impossible for the era by engaging multiple targets at the same time in March 1969, but against maneuvering targets, even the 20 years more recent APG-70 struggled. The fact that TWIS is the ubiquitous engagement in radar mode is a gameism. Until Active Electronics Scan Array, or AISA, radars in fact trackway scan was not a thing whilst engaging. It was great in many things, but STT was the go-to radar mode to use even in the 2000s. So, citing multiple active or former crews I spoke to or read about from various fighter jets, from F-15 to F-18, Tankless Scan was poor, but other modes such as HD twees were good for certain targets in close proximity. In fact, the very first time a fighter engaged and shot down, more than a target was guiding more than a missile at the same time occurred only during the war in Kosovo. This is the audio recording. So seeing NF14 in 1974, engaging multiple maneuvering targets at 60 nautical miles in Tacos scan with the A54A is well I don't know. And besides the doctrine called for the employment of the M7 Sparrow against fighters until mid-80s. Moreover, the M54A was not a superb missile in this sort of scenario and it did not allow launch and leave tactics as the WCS activated a missile seeker. And in STT, the M54A is de facto a semi-active radar homing missile. During the Iran vs Iraq war in the 80s, the Phoenix A scored multiple kills against fighters, even destroying multiple aircraft with a single missile, thanks to the immense size of the lethal range. But between a fundamentally stupid missile like the Phoenix A and the A120A, and especially the B, there are more than 20 years of technological advancements. In fact, it's the introduction of the M54C in 1986 that changes everything and marks the moment the Phoenix becomes an even greater serious threat, much more reliable no matter the type of target faced. Since we're here, let's watch how the real tech was can work in the F14. The source is Bayo Branek, former radar intercept officer and Top Gun instructor and author of three books. You can find more information on his website, topgunbio.com. I strongly recommend Tom Carrillo, his third book. It is the one I enjoyed the most. You can find links in the description below. Here we can see a few seconds of the TCS, then the TID in aircraft stabilized mode, in attack mode to be precise, and we can tell this easily by the presence of the artificial horizon. As you know, if you are not new to this channel, in this mode the vectors are relative to the Tomcat. This is not the God's eye view. The geometry is simple, close to zero cut or the F-14 is flying towards the reciprocal of the target. The V sub C or cruise rate is quite low, about 700 knots. The target is 7000 feet, more or less, and this means that BIOS F-14 was flying between 10,000 and 50,000 feet. It is a bit hard to tell because Terqua scan seems to be in out of 4 bars, plus minus 20, given the minor adjustments we can see that corresponds to every refresh of the track. So a lot comes down to where the centroid is. Initially, however, we can see STT, and the target appeared to be minus 2 degrees at 13 nautical miles, which corresponds to more or less 6,000 feet of delta. A cool thing we see here, but not in DCS, is the presence of false contacts. It seems that they are removed by the WCS as a second sweep cleans the situation. When I had the chat with Bayo, he said the range was search was even worse in this regard. I wonder if it is because in range was search there are no tags, making it hard to discern an actual return from a false contact. And since a full radar sweep when fully open can take up to 14 seconds more or less, false returns can confuse the picture. There are more details we can talk about, but one of the most interesting is that the target is bouncing around on the TID. Every jump corresponds to a few miles. Imagine what happens if two maneuvering targets fly very close together with such a radar. In contrast, STT was smoother and accurate, which is great when engaging a maneuvering target, even before diving into more complex aspects of our radar mode's work. In DCS, yes, this jumping of the target is not so visible, but Ebor has done an outstanding job portraying the Og9, and many of its problems are visible, such as tracks that all of a sudden turn cold for 2 seconds or contact disappearing. In fact, one of the most common issues of the new players is considering Twiz as a stealth godly mode. With the Og9 instead, the outcome of dealing with closely flying maneuvering targets is that often the WCS can discern the two contacts 
due to the two seconds interval, so a pixel return and the other is extrapolated, which means missile trashed with a Phoenix A most of the times. All of this on top of the problems of the AN, ASN, 92, INS and the WCS when cranking that cause the same outcome, and many other aspects the crew must consider. Unfortunately, we don't see the DDD here. That display would answer a lot of questions. Back to common modern operations, another point I would like to understand better is why aircraft target and employ against dragging targets. It seems that this happens when an aircraft is targeted and or within NES. Or this can be human error, so my fault. Drag is a brevity and means contact aspect stabilized 0, 60 degrees angle from tail or 120, 180 degrees angle from the nose. Ergo the target is running away or TA 120, 180. In this scenario I would like an option to have my fighters drop the targets and reset towards the previous position. This point relates to the opposite side of the engagement. Command modern operations in fact allows a bit of tuning of the ROI and the engagement ranges and even, and I was surprised, basic commit criteria and targeted prioritization. As mentioned, perhaps I'm missing something, since I'm still at the very beginning, but otherwise creating something as simple as a grinder or simply put avoiding what happens in this case with AI requires some micromanagement. A final note about the radar logic. Possible solution, no idea how feasible it is, would be having three modes, or better saying logical criteria. I noticed in fact that the F-14 already switches radar modes to STT when employing an M7. So this should be the case for the M54 at least as well, in case the ROE dictate a single shot. So rather than implementing a more complex logic for radar azimuth changes, why not introduce an additional search mode? This would increase the SA drastically for any aircraft in the same situation, on top of allowing a transition between search mode and STT. In other words, wide search mode into either STT or TACWA scan depending on the doctrine and ROE. Anyway, this is just a wee thought, and the devs know better. I'm eager to learn command mode operation better. For this purpose, I have already ordered a few books about modern naval operations and warfare. To get a better understanding of how real things work, rather than just blindly pretend I know what I'm doing, as I do with the F-14. I really enjoy realistic or at least believable scenarios and usage of assets. Thanks for watching and take care.